In a previous example, we looked at this same bar just for an illustration of the axial stress. We'll review that here also and in, in also look at the modulus elasticity of the material. But what we're really focusing in here on this particular example is that when we pull on this bar, we actually get then, of course, elongation, but we're going to get shortening of that bar in the other direction. Right? And so this 6 by 50 millimeter flat alloy bar under this 35 kilonewton axial load has elongated by 1.22 millimeters and that original length was one and a half meters. And those are going to be keys as we go through this particular uh, problem. So just as a quick review, remember that the axial stress is just one special example of a normal stress is given to us here in this case with the axial force divided by the cross-sectional area or 35 kilonewtons over the 6 by 50, so that's 300 square millimeters. And remember one of the keys here in the SI units was that if we got this into units of newtons over square millimeters, that is the same as megapascals. And so when you then take 35,000 divided by 300, that's going to give you the 116.7 uh, megapascals in tension for that axial or that normal stress. Right. We get the modulus of elasticity of the material by going back to Hooke's Law, and that sigma is equal to E epsilon, so that means, of course, therefore, our calculated value for our, our modulus of elasticity is then the stress divided by the associated strain. And we just calculated the stress at 116.7 megapascal, but we've yet to calculate what the strain is, and that we get from the original information that our strain is equal to delta over L, that length over which we are measuring the deformation. That's the 1.22 over 1500 uh, millimeters. Notice I've done that conversion already and uh, 1.22 divided by 1500 is 8.13 times 10 to the minus fourth. Remember those units are millimeters over millimeters or meters over meters. Of course, this will be the same number no matter what set of units that you're using as long as they're consistent, but the numerator of that strain is deformation over the original length. Right, and then that goes into the uh, denominator of our modulus calculation. And now, of course, you'll get then the units to work out right for modulus of elasticity, that being of stress, and 116.7 divided by that number there is going to be a large number of about 143,443 uh, four, megapascals, or about 143 gigapascals. Again, consistent with what we had suggested. Okay, so that's just a review there and to warm you up to this problem where our real interest is to describe what the lateral effects are. Because here we've had this longitudinal strain and that longitudinal strain then it's, it's not a conservation of mass argument here but you could think about it like that, that we're elongating this material and when we elongate it one direction then the, the member has to shorten in the other direction. And so that's where we get this idea then, and we've captured it in the linear elastic range, that that ratio of what happens in the two different directions is given to us by the lateral strain divided by the longitudinal strain. Now this minus sign here just reflects that we like to have ratios that are positive and that our lateral strain which is going to shrink when we are elongating in one direction then in, in itself has a minus sign and so um, that will be a minus times a minus giving us then therefore the uh, plus for Poisson's ratio. Right? And we're given that that Poisson's ratio is 0.32. So we can get then the lateral strain is equal to uh, minus nu times the longitudinal strain 
That's minus 0.32 times the 8.13 times 10 to the minus fourth. I still have that in my calculator. So times 0.32, and that's about 2.60. times 10 to the minus fourth. And I'll have units, of course, of meters per meter or millimeters per millimeter. And so now we can get then the other two uh, deformations that were asked for, the change in the two lateral di uh, dimensions by looking at then just working with this kind of basic definition of strain, that now the deformation here in the width will be equal to the lateral strain. I dropped off the minus sign there, didn't I? And so the lateral strain times the original width, so minus 2.60 times 10 to the minus fourth times our width of 50, and that's going to give us the minus 0 0.013. Someone who wrote this answer here gave us a naked decimal place. Shame on them. And then the deformation in the height is also against strain lat times now the original height minus 2.60 times 10 to the minus fourth times six, and that gives us the minus 0 0.00156. In both cases, that's millimeters because the W and the H were in millimeters. Notice how incredibly tiny those are, and that's oftentimes why we. Uh, sometimes don't even talk about this effect uh, because our, our strains are going to be pretty small and the changes in the lateral dimension are small, but they do exist. All right, one last example then for a uh, the Poisson effect here is we have a tension test on a half inch diameter specimen, two inches of gauge length, and we record a force of 3,000 pounds that we have then an axial deformation of 30.5 times 10 to the minus fourth inches. And now the diameter is uh, point Four nine nine eight. Now, in reality, a half-inch diameter specimen, if it's standard, will actually be 0 0.502 inches in diameter. However, we're going to just use the what's given to us in the actual problem statement that our diameter original equals 0.5 inches. Our diameter final equals 0 0.4998 inches, and so therefore, our change in the diameter would then be. 0.4998 minus 0 0.5 equaling to 0 0.0002 inches, right? And <coughs> that's important here, right? That gives us something that's going on here in the lateral direction, so the lateral strain will be a minus 0 0.0002. Notice I threw in that minus sign there divided by the original does diameter of 0.5, right? So that's going to be 2e4 minus divided by 0.5. And boy, did I really need to do that yeah, on a calculator? No, <laughs> but I did anyways. Minus 4 times 10 to the minus 4th inches of deformation per original inch of length. And then we have the longitudinal strain being given by uh, its axial deformation divided by its original length, 30.5 times 10 to the minus fourth inches over 2 inches, that gauge length, that standard gauge length. And so 30.5 divided by 2 is going to be then um, 15.25 times 10 to the minus fourth inch per inch. And through clever way of doing this, New or Poisson's ratio is just equal to minus the lateral strain divided by the longitudinal strain. And so ultimately here, there we get 4 divided by 15.25. And times 10 to the minus fourth, of course, cancels out. And we get a 0 0.262 or approximately 0 0.26 for our Poisson's ratio of this particular alloy material.